A very good morning to you and welcome. You're watching Ant TV. This is Morning at Ant TV and this is Everyday Life. Now, this morning, um, there was been, of course, a lot of information in the public domain about the fake, call it the fake hepatitis B uh, vaccine. And uh, a lot of people um, through their various uh, health centers had, had been vaccinated or thought they had been vaccinated and had gone through the entire three-phase vaccination process. And then information um, gets to be shared that that vaccine may actually not be the vaccine that the ministry had uh, provided for that vaccination. So this morning, uh, we have the authority responsible uh, for regulation of that sector, the drug sector. And with me in the morning uh, is Helen Ndagije Biomire, who is the Director of Product Safety at the National Drug Authority. Helen, a very good morning and thank you very much um, for joining us this morning. Um, so, when did NDA know there was a fake vaccine on the market? Well, it, it's a long story, but uh, towards the end of February, we we knew that there could be a fake vaccine the, on the market because on the streets of, of Mbarara we were able to pick up a set of um, 48 sam uh, mm. well, label, samples of label uh, of hepatitis B. So uh, that raised the, the initial suspicion and indeed when we went further to investigate, we found various clinics that were vaccinating in Barara, even in Kampala, and in, we also found some in Bali Central Market with, um, with uh, the suspect vac vaccine. But the, the, so let's, let's, let's clear this. So the only way you'd think it was a suspect vaccine was the labels, because you, do, you didn't have the capacity to test the, vac the, the product itself. Um, we, did n we didn't have the capacity to yes. test. Yes. We could only do some preliminary tests. Yes. And even the preliminary tests that we did, we got that suspicion that there could be, um, they could, th there could be uh, An adulterated foul play. product or yes. foul play or, yes. uh, and, and the labels were just not right. So the ones you had initially approved as NDA were not the ones on the market or in the private clinics you had gone to? Actually, the, the ones approved, most of the vaccine uh, affected was the one that had the label of government of Uganda not for sale. Yes. And you could visibly see in many of the samples that it, there was attempted rubbing off of that label. Yes. So uh, the fact that uh, that happened and also the fact that with our preliminary test we found that there was no difference between the suspected sample in content and the, and, and, and the one which was genuine from the local technical representative or the manufacturer, the representative of the manufacturer in Uganda. So we, we started suspecting that this could actually be uh, this could have been uh, products that were stolen from the government facili health facilities. All right, so let, let's backtrack a bit. So after your, your, your visits to Mbarara, your visits to Mbale, and then now here in Kampala, you discover a lot of health centers are, are, had actually taken people through this vaccination process. Uh, but you also discovered there were those that had actually the original product that had been provided by uh, the Ministry of, of Health. Uh, just take us through the, the identification process when you decided now we need to inform the public this is the place where you can find the real drug. Um, well, of course, uh, the identification process of where yes. we, we know which, which, pro which, uh, we know which facilities yes. actually receive because yes. National Medical Stores shared with us the details and so did uh, the importer. Uh, the details of of how much and what exactly what drug by batch number by by quantities and dates and so on that they had supplied they are first of all that br they had brought into the country yes. and that they had given to NMS yes. and NMS shared with us exactly who had got the vaccine yes so from that standpoint from that point of view then we and then and then all these centers were going through by the ministry of health uh, 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 an accreditation 
of do you have a fridge do you how do you keep the vaccine and so on so as far as vaccine in the public health sector we were happy with that but now the problem was mm. uh, the, the problem was with this suspicion of it could be a falsified product uh, the problem was now uh, how far well i mean uh, i mean the cold chain could have been broken for instance but uh, according to tests that are now being done, they are not yet concluded, mm. but at least chemical tests show that there was nothing toxic, there was no chemical contaminants into what was, uh, what was, uh, what was uh, between the, the, the vaccines that we collected and, yes. and the genuine one, actually the genuine one was that got. Was on the market. Not from not them on the market, yes. but the the one by the manufacturer themselves. Okay. Yeah. So you had a process because uh, many would be wondering then how are you uh, were you able then to identify because you did the preliminary tests to identify the um, the fact that this may not be the exact product that was provided by the national medical stores. How did you um, you know confirm that that this was actually a falsified product uh, other than just the labels and 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 the uh, before even the preliminary tests, how are you able to say, wait a minute, I think there's a... Because a lot of people are being vaccinated. Remember, public information, there was a lot of advertising that we should all go for hepatitis B vaccination. And so everyone was looking for a health center that would provide a hepatitis B vaccine, which is, which is almost the same, even for cervical cancer, whatever it is, I in the market. So whenever you're looking for a vaccine, you go to your nearest health center or your usual health center and ask for that vaccination. So how are you able then to say that I think we have a problem with hepatitis B and not any other vaccine? Okay, in addition to what I've already said, the, the issue was that for the people, we, we have so far 10 cases yes. that have been opened and most, actually all the people that we have found with this falsified vaccine um, first of all we are vendors, yes. they are hawkers, they don't have an address or they have concealed their address that is one then for the the other thing is that uh, they all uh, okay some of them especially the one who was convicted has 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 uh, admitted to having got uh, to having uh, uh, to have to having got it from from the from from the from government the government health facility, yes. but they have... Then does that make it fake? Because at the end of the day, it's the same product, but that doesn't make it fake. Uh, yeah. It's, it, the it's only difference is falsified. that he's, he's just changed the labels yes. just to make sure you know that True. it's not for sale, and he's actually selling it and making a, uh, a, profit. Making, yes, yes. a profit from, yeah, yes. from the process. Yeah, so that is, that is it. It's, it's not that it's, it is fake. It's really the falsification for... Uh, for, for for profit or gain. I, were you able to engage gain? the manufacturer um, to be able then to say, uh, can, are you able to help us verify this, this product? Because there is a product on the market. However, the one that we know is recommended by the national medical stores is not the one we are seeing on the market. Yes, we did engage the manufacturer. I said that the manufacturer shared with us the yes. batches they have supplied to yes. Uganda. They also uh, were able to tell us which which the which batches uh, are not genuine and the 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 surprisingly also all the manufact all the batches that were uh, suspect are very similar or the same batches as the manufacturer had actually sent to Uganda. So the person the, the these people sort of uh, were getting a copy or they were actually picking the government product mm. and just rubbing off mm. the ink. Mm. So whether they made the, the whether they made uh, new labels, they, they were in tandem to, with what was being supplied. That is what we got from the manufacturer. But we have also uh, sent some samples to the manufacturer and we hope that we will get uh, some other results from the manufacturer which we, we shall compare with our own results. All right, so you, you had a couple of samples initially in the market of the suspected falsified vaccines. I, I see 192. Was that um, from across the country? Yes, from across the so country. This is not just central, this is just, not just Kampala. Not just Kampala, the ones from Barara, the ones from, from Mbali, and the ones from. Uh, Did you have any samples from northern Uganda in, in, in Gulu? No, no, you, not yet. Did you have any issues? No. Um, so these health facilities uh, that were, um, you know, supplying or providing this vaccination, 
Um, take us through the process now you're, going, you're having to go through with helping them provide the necessary vaccination they should be actually using. Because a lot of people, including myself, who went through a process which we now are in doubt of, are wondering whether we should actually go back to our health facilities or now find a totally new health facility to do this exercise again. Um, well, the Ministry of Health yes. is handling the accreditation. Yes. But for us, what we do is to, to ensure, as we do for all other drugs, that that whatever uh, that whichever conditions whether the cold chain the kind of people handling the vaccine is okay and the the, the premises are are suitable for handling that and then we hand it over to the ministry of health you mentioned one suspect was convicted yes. uh, any other did you have uh, any other cases reported there and, are and, and nine other arrested? cases still in, yeah uh -huh. there, there we have uh, nine other people who are still um, in in the court process and and these were and these were uh, the hawkers the, not really health centers these were just hawkers of these products you found on the streets uh, providing this vaccination uh, well we we there in there are some in charges who are helping us of, of health or clinics, actually they are mainly private clinics, mm -hmm. who are helping us with the investigations in getting to the actual source. So I cannot reveal so much All more right. detail. Okay. I, I was trying to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what have you done um, in, in, in the fact that the test was sent to Geneva to verify, you, to the results were sent uh, to, for verification, the tests uh, were done. In, what is the latest we can get from you? Well, the latest is that uh, the it's, it's actually not Geneva. Yes. It, Geneva was WHO headquarters. Was Geneva involved, was yes. helping us to to work with a lab in the, in the in the UK. The regulators like us in the UK, the medicines and, and healthcare product regulatory agency in the United Kingdom. They their lab has has uh, really almost confirmed our findings that the with respect to the chem the chemical co com composition compo composition the of chemical the composition is okay is okay yes there are no contaminants yes so they and what they also see is a different uh, or falsification of the label okay yes so uh, in if I was to to summarize your statement does that mean that those who actually were vaccinated may be safe safe not safe in terms of that they, they there was a contaminants that could affect them with long-term effects from a drug but safe in terms of they do not have to carry out another vaccination that i can't answer yet <laughs> until the biological <laughs> tests are yes, complete i, th which I thought so yes. yes so should we as ugandans be worried about hepatitis b vaccine i think i think right should we? now not I think you shouldn't be because... Because, I mean, like myself, I've decided I will wait out the process for now. I, I can't go through the three needles again, and I'm not so sure if I will be doing the right thing again. Yeah, we can only confirm that after the, the final uh, part of the, of the test is done. All right, and finally, NDA's next step. So what happens next? What do you do from here? Um, are you telling us we must get in touch with you to verify the product we are getting in the market? Do we do do we have to if we suspect a product we get in touch with NDA? What happens? What happens going forward? Yes, going forward, of course, if you do suspect a product or if you ha if you have been vaccinated and get an issue, please report it to the National Drug Authority. But also going forward, uh, in terms of uh, where you access where you uh, access, access health services. Health services. Yes. It's better for hepatitis B to go to the government health. Facility. Well, it was a very expensive exercise. Not many people could afford it, and so people were finding the nearest alternative. Of course, but it's it's costly sometimes. That's what this whole uh, experience we've got from the hepatitis B. All right, Helen. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, I'm hoping you will return because we've been uh, receiving one or two concerns around other drugs. Um, in the market and what's happening in the drug space. We will welcome you back. The idea is that um, you must guarantee that where we're going to receive these products or the drugs on the market are actually certified by NDA as uh, human friendly and the right product to use on the market. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And the issue around the, the, the pharmacies, if I can quickly add, add, add that. We, we've seen that one pharmacy get shut down. Um, is that really 
something just outside about licensing or is that about the products they were selling? I just wanted to. It's about licensing. Only? Only licensing. I just wanted to. It's only licensing. And there, were, there are many others that um, are not licensed yet and will probably be shut down. Yes. So why shut down one very quickly and not all the others that are suspect and have not been licensed? Okay, not suspect, it, but are, are unlicensed. It's, it's an ongoing process. So uh, as in, if it, it just got media attention, but it's an ongoing process. <laughs> Helen, thank you. Helen yeah. Dagije, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Helen is the Director of Product Safety at the National Drug Authority. We were talking about uh, the hepatitis B vaccine. Well, the good news um, she's just shared about the vaccine and after the tests in the UK is that it didn't have any um, uh, bad uh, uh, com you know, composition was right. Uh, but they are still carrying out more tests and investigations around uh, the other uh, you know, issues around the drug. And so we will, as on TV, continue to bring you any updates from that. Uh, but for now, they say and she says, please go to the recommended health facilities by the ministry for the hepatitis B vaccine. And that's Everyday Life.